Good morning. This is Field to the Brim, and it is Saturday, July 22nd, and we are talking about entrapment. This is the last uh, message on entrapment, but boy, have I been challenged because we're talking about the enemy's devices here. Entrapment, what does it mean? It means being caught in a trap, being tricked into a trap. And the enemy wants you to be deceived or tricked into his traps. And through this week, we talked about Eve and Abraham and Sarah and Joshua and Samson. And yesterday, we talked about Moses who, what at, rather than speaking to the rock, he strikes the rock. And what is he doing? He's using an old method rather than obeying what the Lord has spoken to him to do. And he took control of the situation based upon what he wanted because he was angry. And as a result, he lost out. He fell into the enemy's traps. You know what? How do we prevent entrapment? Well, we do it by being in submission to Christ every day, offering ourselves up as a living sacrifice, which is our worship, which means then that we walk with a transformed mind because we want the thoughts of God, not our own thoughts, our own heart, the, the merging center of our thoughts and our emotions and our will, decisions. That is a place that needs to be in submission to the Lord so that we know God's good, perfect, and pleasing will for our lives. So we don't want to be interrupted. We don't want to be deceived by the enemy, just like Samson, by our own flesh even. Sometimes it's just not the enemy. It's our own flesh that's deceiving us. Today, I want to talk about another method that the enemy entraps us, and that is when we abandon accountability. Accountability. Some people have a hard time with that. Many people do. And especially now, since there are so many ways to be um, one-dimensional. One-dimensional in a picture, watching a video, those types of things. It's very one-dimensional relationally rather than being integrated or holistic. And we have been made in the image of God and we have been made by God to not live alone, to be in relationship. And relationship is significant to our healthy being. That's the way God made us. He made us in his image. And he said, it is not good for man to be alone. See, God says, I, I made man in my image and God is in constant relationship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we are made in the way of needing relationship. Not isolation, but relationship with God and with one another. So we are not to abandon accountability. And accountability is needed particularly as fallen human beings. We are new creations, yes, but we are not yet made perfect. We are in process and we need accountability with our brothers and sisters. And when we abandon accountability, we actually are abandoning God's voice in our lives. Whoa, Pastor Lynn. Let me just explain that. You see, one way God speaks to us is through our brothers and sisters, healthy brothers and sisters in Christ. Galatians 6, 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of God. Well, you say, well, shouldn't God speak to us as individuals? Absolutely. Now, remember, you got to be inquiring of the Lord. you got to be praying. you got to be submitting yourself, surrendering yourself to the, to the Lord. And in that, we are communing with the Lord. So important. Yes, he does speak to us. But we are in a healthy place when what is spoken to us can be shared and tested and evaluated by godly brothers and sisters to make sure that we're not being deceived. To make sure that it's falling into alignment with God's word. And I have talked with many what we would call singular Christians, isolated Christians, that are speaking nonsense. That are speaking a lot of crazy. They're even using scripture to do that because they are isolated and there's no one holding them accountable. And they have become very unhealthy people. It's also a red flag of spiritual pride. Listen to this. It's a red flag of spiritual pride 
when we lack accountability with our brothers and sisters because we don't think we need it. We think we can do everything on our own. We think we can be this isolated uh, person and the truth is we can't and it is unhealthy and it is one way where a sheep gets out of the flock and is on his own. That's what the enemy wants because he is a wolf and he is a liar and he likes to deceive sheep into following him as well as being devoured by him. Once again, Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And since our heart can be deceitful sometimes, we and it can be flesh-driven, we have to be, be aware of being flesh-driven rather than spirit-driven, we need other people to help us. You know, the truth is this, you can't see what's on your back a lot of times. You can't see your back. A lot of times your back is where all your faults are. And our brothers and sisters can help us because they see our back. Romans 13, 14, this is what Paul writes. And this has to do with community, by the way. He's talking to relational community, a community of faith. Romans 13, 14. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. I've used this before in our walk with the Lord. Not Don't about the, the, the confronting of our mind and our thought life. So he says, do not even think about gratifying the desires of your flesh. But you know what's interesting about this scripture, Romans 13, 14? It's in the context of community, love for one another. Because before he gets even to verse 14, this is what he says in that same chapter, Romans 13, 8 through 10. Let no debt, <coughs> excuse me, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Remember, I just said, Galatians 6.2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So, so Paul writes this in Galatians. He's also writing this in Romans. This is the interaction. This is Christ's law for us to be in relationship with one another to love one another and love doesn't mean that i let you fall into satan's traps so we go on verse 9 the commandments you shall not commit adultery you shall not murder you shall not steal you shall not covet and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command love your neighbor as yourself love does no harm to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law and we're talking here about accountability in authentic community. An authentic Christ-centered community happens when there is self-disclosure. We don't go to church or to our community of faith and we sit there and just are spectators, but we have relationship. There is self-disclosure. There is trust between one another. We bear one another's burdens. In another part of the New Testament, it says confess your faults to one another so that you might be healed. When we do not want to be accountable and we do not want to have self-disclosure, we're hiding out. And there's a reason why we're hiding. Listen, sin produced the hiding factor. Adam and Eve hid because of sin. Yes, because of fear as well. But fear came as a result of sin. Maybe fear of disclosure. And the truth is, in community, we should have self-disclosure and trust as brothers and sisters, as a protector against the enemy's devices. See, the Lord wants godly relationships. And those godly relationships have a, a very strong component of accountability that prevents the entrapment of the enemy. An example. Let's go to a scriptural example. King David, we love. Another person that we absolutely love and honor. King David actually fell into the entrapment of adultery because he was not in a place of accountability. King David fell into the trap of adultery because he was not in a place of accountability. 
How do we know this? Well, we go to the story. The very first verse that introduces the story, 2 Samuel 11, 1. Then it happened in the spring, at the time when the kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all the fighting men of Israel, and they destroyed the Ammonites, besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. This is how the story is introduced. This is the, the root cause to the adultery is that David did not go into battle. He was not where he was supposed to be. He should not have remained. All the fighting men went into the battle. And David was a fighting man. That's how he became king. He became king because he was great, had great exploits in battle and continued to do so even after he's with Bathsheba. But for some reason... He feels like he doesn't need to be with the people he should be accountable to. And he stays back and he is alone there. And he falls prey to the devices of the enemy. And to the device of his own flesh. Because he lacks accountability. He left the battlefield due to the lack of accountability. Which came actually from a proud heart. Because David did this because he could. He was a leader. He was answerable to no one except for God and the prophets. And this cost him dearly, dearly. This lack of accountability cost him. And he not only was an adulterer, but he came, became a murderer. And the death of their baby also happened. And rebellion came to his household as a result of his sin. Through his son Absalom, death came to his household. There was a great price for his lack of accountability. God at that point. Just like I talked about Moses. When he strikes the rock tw twice. Rather than speaking to the rock. And God was actually requiring more of Moses. In that same way. God was requiring more of David. At this point in his life. David had been given much. And this lack of accountability. Was just something that his flesh wanted which led him down the slippery slope of sin. See, the truth is this. When you choose not to be accountable with your brothers and sisters in Christ, listen, it's who you're accountable. You need to be in the counsel of the godly. When you choose not to be accountable for whatever reason, you are choosing to fall into the enemy's entrapments. You are not the exception to the rule. David was not the exception to the rule. I'm not the exception to the rule. We're not the exception to the rule. We need to be in relationship, connected to our godly brothers and sisters in Christ. This is one of the main ways that God protects us from the enemy's deceptions and the entrapments. It also helps us to, to crucify our flesh as well, which is also an entrapment that we can fall into. I want you to pray about this word. What a powerful week. Boy, have I been challenged. Hopefully you've been challenged too. Listen, you don't have to be entrapped by the enemy. Be challenged by this word. Pray about it. God bless you.